Ilhan Omar has just been booted from the House Foreign Affairs Committee. That was a vote taken by Republicans, uh, and she was kicked out along with Adam Schiff and Eric Swalwell, who were taken off of the House Intelligence Committee. Now, I think in the case of Schiff and Swalwell, that the Republicans have a pretty strong case because both these people abused their positions on the House Intelligence Committee to falsely claim that they had secret proof that Trump was a Russian agent, uh, Adam Schiff especially. Ilhan Omar, it's clear this is a political decision, and they're upset at her for her criticism of Israel, and they've made that very, very clear. The let's, problem uh, is, yeah. Let, let, we, let's just yeah. let's just play some video by Kevin McCarthy sure, yeah. before we get your take. She said the American military was equal to Hamas and the Taliban from a member of the foreign affairs. She said Americans only like Israel because it's all about the Benjamins. And three years later, she said, I didn't know there's a trope when it comes to referring to someone who's Jewish with money. She said on 9-11, on 9-11, as a member of Congress, as an individual who's sitting on foreign affairs, something happened that day. What does that say to other people around the world? What does that say to somebody else who wants to create another 9-11 America? I'm sorry. It's not right. We were right in our action, and she can serve on other committees. But it puts America in jeopardy, and I'm not going to do that under my watch. And it's fair in the process, unlike them. Something happened. What, what is he saying? Nothing happened on 9-11? Is he a 9-11 denier? <laughs> and, and I mean, it's all about the Benjamins. That was, you know, it's just one of the, the, that was one of those instances where you just say something that's so obviously true and therefore forbidden in Washington. If it wasn't all about the Benjamins, this wouldn't have happened because the Benjamins are fueling Kevin McCarthy and so many other people who sit on that committee their their careers um aaron yeah i mean what she said was right uh it was 100 percent true i mean apac brags about how much influence it has and how much money it raises to exert that influence so her saying it's all about the benjamin's baby was correct uh i think the critique we have is that ilhan omar um is not like some sort of anti-imperialist martyr on so many policies she's in line with the republicans like kevin mccarthy for example, in funding every single time for the funding bills uh, on the proxy war in Ukraine. And, and also, and if and you pointed this out, Max, that the way Democrats are responding, instead of defending Ilhan Omar's critiques of Israel, they're trying to make this about identity politics and saying yeah. that they're, they're, make, they're targeting her because she's a woman of color. And I'm sure for some Republicans, you, you could make that case that they're, you know, they're driven by racial animus and uh, animus towards her as a Muslim woman who wears the hijab. But this comes from her criticism of Israel. That's what the comment that got her in trouble was about. And Democrats in defending her for being ousted are not trying to defend her for a comment about that. Are not trying to point out that that's why she's being targeted. Yeah. <laughs> and they're playing perfectly into the hands of the Republicans by taking this line that this is just about a woman of color being targeted. But let's listen to AOC's theatrical one minute performance woman from New York, Representative Ocasio-Cortez. All right, gentlelwoman is recognized for one minute. Thank you. Now, <laughs> as also as a fellow New Yorker, I think one of the things that we should talk about here is also one of the disgusting legacies after 9-11 has been the targeting and racism against Muslim Americans throughout the United States of America. And this is an extension of that legacy. Consistency, there is nothing consistent with the Republican Party's continued attack except for the racism and incitement of violence against women of color in this body. I had a member of the Republican caucus threaten my life and you all and the Republican caucus rewarded him with one of the most prestigious committee assignments in this Congress. Don't tell me this is about consistency. Don't tell me that this is about an a, a condemnation of anti-Semitic remarks when you have a member of the Republican caucus who, have, who has talked about Jewish space lasers and, and an entire amount of tropes <laughs> and also elevated her to some of the highest committee assignments in this body. This is about targeting women of color in the, in the United States of America. Don't tell me because I didn't get a single apology. Time Expired. My life was threatened. Thank you. Oh, she threw the she threw the book at him. Mm -hmm. She's talking about Marjorie Taylor Greene. She made some 
weird comments about the Rothschilds and some kind of satellite system on Facebook. And so it was interpreted as Jewish space lasers, but she never said Jewish space lasers. Hmm. Uh, and she's, you know, gotten some committee assignments. The Democrats stripped her from her committee assignments. So this is kind of like revenge for that. But the point that I made on Twitter was this is not necessarily about targeting a woman of color. The Republicans ran a woman of color, a Muslim Somali military veteran against Ilhan Omar. She lost in her congressional election, who is a hijabi. Mm. So the Republicans like women of color if they do what they want. They like men of color like Clarence Thomas if they do what they want. Most people of color don't generally do what the Republicans want. But this isn't about that. This is about the Benjamins. That's what this whole thing is about. It's about the Israel lobby and its power in American life. And they don't want to talk about that. AOC doesn't even want to deal with it. That's why she voted present on funding the Iron Dome, which is the key to Israel's ability to escalate endlessly against the defenseless people of the Gaza Strip. So she doesn't mention that at all. She makes it about identity politics. And then at the end, she makes it about herself in this performance where she can't even pull off her own lines. And the, every member of the squad said that they all said women of color. And this is what it's just, it's about racism. And uh, I, I mean, I guess that's, that's the line they want to take because, Hey, what would happen to them if they brought up the Benjamins, the same yeah. thing that happened to the white man in the UK, Jeremy Corbyn, who right. was destroyed for basically defending the basic humanity of Palestinians. I don't even think he said anything as inflammatory as it's all about the Benjamins. He's no, white. He, He's yeah, a man. Yeah. He was destroyed. The Israeli government participated in that attack. So did the Labor Party. So That's did a, Keir Starmer. They're still attacking him. That's a great point. So did Mike Pompeo, who vowed to basically undermine him if ever if ever he got elected, or even to prevent him from, from winning the election. Um, that's a great point. Uh, you can't say that Jeremy Corbyn was targeted for identity politics. Uh, he was targeted because he recognizes the identities of Palestinians, and he stands up for their rights. And it, Democrats don't want to talk about that because they don't want to do that. And yeah. and they that's why when Ilhan Omar had that tweet, instead of defending her, they all apologized and said, "Oh, she didn't know about the sensitivity of the topic, and she, you know, she didn't know she should have stood by what she tweeted because it was accurate." And <clears throat> yes, I mean, what's the point of being in Congress unless you want to be famous or rich, uh, <laughs> which are two things most people in the country want to be. I'd assume the squad, they at least like the notoriety and fame. AOC probably wants to be senator. Maybe she thinks she can run for president someday. Um, yeah, well, uh, a new point, as we just saw, is uh, to vote against socialism. Uh, you see that vote that just happened where <laughs> there was a resolution to denounce yeah. socialism? Yeah. Ro Khanna was among the people to sign on. The resolution listed the crimes of uh, yeah. Chavez and Maduro, Venezuela, and Castro, and Rokana voted for that, and so did Marcy Captor Capper, I think her name is. Captor, yeah. Well, Captor, she's yeah. uh she's got a yeah, she's got a ton of Ukrainians in her district, I think. But yeah, they're all, I mean, they're all the left is in the US is anti-communist, so it basically repeated a lot of talking points that I see in the nation. Um, you know, that I hear from like Trotskyists all the time, like Bill Fletcher and uh, you know, the ISO types. <laughs> it's not really like it, but it's it's being introduced by some straight up Neanderthals who are like the communism has killed two hundred million billion people, and they count like everyone who died in Nazi Germany fighting World War II. They, I mean, the victims of Communism Memorial Foundation literally counts all the Nazi soldier deaths in World War II as victims of communism. <laughs> I assume that Stepan Bandera is a victim of communism, and that memorial is ushered in by a Democratic president, Bill Clinton. So the Republicans do this to like kind of get the Democrats to vote, to, to hope they'll vote against it so they can say, see, you're a communist. Uh, it, it's really stupid. But there's another point I wanted to make about Ilhan Omar that I think is more substantial and relevant to her, her constituents here. And it relates to, it's important to make because I don't have the tweet right in front of me, but when she was uh, stripped of her committee assignments, she said, this is not just about you know, attacking a woman of color. It's about silencing the voices of pe- of the people of Africa. So she, this is like her mm-hmm. version of Fauci saying, I am the science. She's saying, I am mama Africa. 
And she is not ne necessarily very well liked in her district by Somali Americans. She is hated by Ethiopians, Ethiopian Americans, Eritreans, because she has been a force for advancing U.S. imperialism on the Horn of Africa. And if the Democrats had somehow won in Congress, she would have been vice chair of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. And that would have been the nightmare for many people from Africa who she claims to represent. Let's, let's get into why. This is an article at The Gray Zone we published by Ann Garrison, who's our friend who contributes to the Black Agenda Report and also hosts a show at Pacifica. Um, and it's about how Ilhan Omar was actually booed at a concert, a Somali-American concert, in uh, on um, in Minneapolis Somali community on Somali Independence Day, so basically Minneapolis is a bastion of the Somali American community. That's her district, the fifth congressional district in 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 Minneapolis in Minnesota. It's a completely blue district, and yet she, this is how she was treated when she appeared at the concert. Everyone in the audience is Somali. She's trying to, the, the more she tries to tell them to stop booing, the more they boo. So why are they booing her? Well, there are a number of reasons. One is that she's not present in her district very often. And that community is more conservative than she is on social issues. She's gotten uh, close to the squad and advanced a lot of their positions on trans issues, for example, that aren't popular there. But there are also a group of activists that appeared at bought tickets to the concert, went to the front row and made plans to boo her because of her performance on the Foreign Affairs Committee. Um, and, you know, let's start with her relationship with uh, Paul Kagame, the authoritarian dictator of Rwanda, which is backed by the U.S. and Israel. And Ilhan Omar actually voted against a House resolution to call on Kagame to release Paul Rusabagina. Who is that? That's the guy that hotel who, who is the subject of Hotel Rwanda, right? He is a, a famous dissident figure in Rwanda. She voted against it. And here's her hanging out with, uh, with Paul Kagame, Ilhan Omar. Well, she's, she, she's hanging out with his wife and she made a trip to Rwanda. Rwanda has been a major force, by the way, in advancing U.S. interventionism in Ethiopia to remove the Ethiopian government. They've been supportive of the TPLF and arming that force. Now, here's Ilhan Omar with Dr. Tedros. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, who is the head of the World Health Organization. He's the secretary general, which is a group that exists under the auspices of the United Nations. And this is significant because Tedros also is the leading figure of the TPLF, the Tigrayan People's Liberation Front, which has been fighting an offensive war to take over Ethiopia and was for many years a U.S. proxy that was used to advance U.S. imperialism in Somalia. So that's really important to understand. She's meeting with him. Do you really think they're talking about, uh, you know, COVID and healthcare? No, she, he's talking to her because he's lobbying for the TPLF because she sat at the time in an important position on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. And you can look at Tedros's Twitter account. It's just nonstop lobbying for regime change in Ethiopia, which is a total violation of his remit at the World Health Organization. This is a UN official lobbying for a regime change war Disgusting. Now, um, on many occasions, Ilhan has asked the State Department for legal determinations as to whether the Ethiopian government is guilty of atrocities. In other words, these are illegal determinations because she is assuming that the U.S. has the right to rule that international crimes like genocide, crimes against humanity, have been committed and action must be taken as we saw in Libya and Syria. The same sort of determinations were sought to create the basis for U.S. intervention. That's what she was doing in Ethiopia. Only the U.N. Security Council can do that. The U.S. can't do that. You can see she questions, she questioned the Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs for a legal determination. And then she called for a carrot and stick approach against Ethiopia. She calls for sanctions. She's calling for the bullying of Ethiopia and Eritrea through a House resolution. 
And this is a key reason why she is despised by Ethiopians and Eritreans. But here's a more lesser known action that Ilhan Omar is engaged in, in relation to her home country of Somalia, her family's home country. She quote tweeted in December 2021, a State Department threat to take action against Somalia if it did not hold early elections to remove its president, Farma Joe. Okay. She said, Farma Joe, as the year passed his mandate, it's time for him to step aside. Now, why is that significant? He was interim president and the state two states in Somalia refused to recognize his authority. He was very well liked by the Somali population and the Somali American community because of his anti-corruption efforts and because he was resisting U.S. efforts to place troops in Somalia. He was fighting to establish a direct one-person electoral process so they could have legitimate elections and break the instability that was caused by these parliamentary elections. And at the same time, he was also uh, fighting for a secular Somali state against the Al-Shabaab militants. So he eventually had to capitulate under this pressure from the U.S. and from Ilhan Omar to May 15th elections. He lost. A new president came into power. And guess what happened next? Biden sent troops to Somalia because the new president was a, an imperial tool, was less resistant than Pharma Joe. So here's... The kicker, this is really something that shocked me to learn as soon as I can get it up on screen, is that after the new president came into power in Somalia, Ahmed, a, a political operator named Ahmed Hersey, took to Facebook to welcome the new president, Somalia, Hassan Sheikh Mohamud and to announce that he was going to be working with him to implement his political agenda. Here he is, Ahmed Hersey with President Mahmoud. Who is Ahmed Hersey? This is the first husband of Ilhan Omar who divorced her after walking in on her and her um, aide in pajamas together uh, as they were having an affair. That's her new husband. So basically Ilhan Omar played a role in bringing this president to the right in power, and then someone who is very close to her goes to work for him. And this is why so many Africans have lashed out, especially people from the Horn of Africa against Ilhan Omar, since she claimed to be the voice of Africa, and they are not sympathetic to her, even though she's being attacked by Kevin McCarthy for some very, very twisted, malign reasons. Uh, so it's a complicated scenario, and it really should help illuminate how anti-imperialists view the House Foreign Affairs Committee and view these kinds of episodes that are so fraught with identity politics and have much more complex issues behind them. Yeah, I mean, again, uh, I don't think she should have been kicked off the committee, obviously, because the reasons were punishment for her political views and whether her political views are right or wrong you shouldn't kick someone off a committee for their views in this case her views i think were correct but that doesn't mean that she is a martyr for standing up to neocons and, and, and one correction sorry that was her second husband ahmed hersey second husband of okay i, I get confused but go ahead aaron okay. yeah no it, it it doesn't mean that now i think ultimately this this is good for Ilhan omar because she'll be able to uh, shield herself from criticism on the left by saying, well, look at these Republicans going after me for my pro-Palestinian views. And for some people, that will be enough to ignore all of her other really uh, questionable views on so many other topics where she's actually in lockstep with the Republicans who just kicked her out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she was kicked off for her opinions. It was McCarthyite by McCarthy. We, we agree on that. But I wanted to bring those issues to light. Um, well, it's not discussed anywhere else. I mean, you don't, I mean, uh, Ilhan has a reputation on the left as being, you know, principled and uh, an ally. And you've just, you know, when it comes to Africa, which um, doesn't get covered very much in, in lefty media in the U.S., uh, you know, you've just explained very clearly why many people in Africa don't feel the same way.